in the current scenario when you manage patients in the ICU, I think it is very important to monitor properly these patients and one of them monitoring is the hemodynamic monitoring. Uh, Dr. J.V. Devatia, who is the professor and head of the department of anesthesia, critical care and pain at Tata Memorial Hospital, Mumbai. Dr. Devatia, what are the static indices of uh, hemodynamic monitoring which I think one must know? So the static index of hemodynamic monitoring or a static index of fluid uh, therapy is a monitor which tells you something about the hemodynamic status of the patient but does not allow you to predict whether or not giving fluid will lead to an increase in cardiac output. In other words, you may monitor for example the CVP. It may tell you something about the fluid volume status. There are of course lots of other connotations to the CVP. But a, a CVP will never tell you whether the patient will respond to fluids by increasing the cardiac output. So these are the static indices which do not tell you whether the patient will increase the cardiac output in response to a fluid load. So like the CVP, you have the pulmonary artery occlusion pressure, the left ventricular end diastolic volume if you are doing echocardiography, the right ventricular end diastolic volume again if you are doing echocardiography, all these parameters, they do tell you something about the hemodynamic state of the patient but do not predict whether or not the cardiac output will increase in response to fluid loading and then hence they are called static parameters. Unlike dynamic parameters which tell you or predict that the cardiac output whether it will increase or not in response to fluid infusion. You know uh, when a patient comes to the ICU and let's say the patient has come who was hypotensive, I gave him some fluid now he is uh, uh, this blood pressure is normal, his mean blood pressure is more than 65. What I am trying to say is, is it necessary to have some kind of hemodynamic monitoring in all patients in ICU? I don't think we should monitor, each and every patient requires hemodynamic monitoring. For example, fluid therapy classically goes through four phases. One is the stay phase of resuscitation, where the patient is an extremist, almost collapsed. At that point, he is bleeding, you know he needs fluid and he doesn't need monitoring at that point in time. Then there's a phase of optimization where the situation that you are seeing that the patient has received some fluid, the BP has come up a little bit and maybe the urine output has not improved, maybe the patient is still not looking right. And he